I thought about this idea of pandemonium. I know what it means to you. Um, but for me in Sydney, we've done fairly well. I want to acknowledge that. And we've been praying hard for our friends uh, in Victoria. But for me, I can think of nothing better than the chaos of 120 year seven students for a whole week, living and breathing with them. My family think I'm crazy. But the pandemonium of this year has taken that beautiful chaos away from me. Uh, I love the chaos of a room full of 17 year olds who are passionately sharing with me that they think my faith is foolish. I love that beautiful chaos of relationship and the pandemonium has taken that away from me at times. Uh, for me, the visual image uh, of 2020 has been a memory of sitting on a beach with one of my good friends, both about to take a bite of a hamburger. And just as my friend closed his jaws, a perfectly timed seagull bird poo landed on the burger and he could not stop closing his mouth. That to me is the pandemonium of this year. Uh, it has got in the way of the good things of God, or at least it feels like that. So I've kept going back to a psalm. I'm glad Remy started with a psalm, Psalm 84, that I think is a psalm for a bird poo year. Let me read just the first few verses. It says, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Uh, this is a psalm of the pilgrims heading to the Jerusalem temple, heading to God's relationship central. And that pilgrimage would have been full of the beautiful chaos of relationship. And this particular pilgrim, I think, is looking back to when they've been in the temple before. And they've remembered that there in the midst of God's relationship central has been a sparrow up near the altar. Uh, it makes me wonder, did they see the bird poo on the ground first and look up? Um, but it's this beautiful contrast of the almighty Lord and the tiny sparrow the mess on the floor doesn't matter anymore because the almighty Lord invites the sparrow into relationship with him. And I hope that reminds you of Jesus' words uh, of birds. But the next verse uh, is, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you, even if we can't sing. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. So for us, of course, we have met Emmanuel, God who dwells with us, who in his chaotic death brought life. We have Emmanuel, so in whatever situation we are present with God, Blessed are those who dwell in Emmanuel. They are ever praising you. And as I look at that psalm, it describes the pilgrims walking through and they are like the autumn rains. So I'm not sure what it's like for you. I have not felt like the autumn rains. But as I put God's relationship order central, then that is what I'm doing in whatever circumstance I find myself in. It's a bird poo year. But Psalm 84 is a reminder that God is a God who bird poo in the temple doesn't matter, but birds with him, well, that's what he's all about. And I'm happy to be his sparrow. I hope that's encouraging. <laughs>